first little job for today was brazing up the the broken quadrant uh, on the lathe so all I've done is I found the right number of washers to pack in there so I could screw the two pieces together and then I used the bench grinder to to effectively V out the crack fairly deep uh, and then I've filled it up with um, using the if it'll focus using the oxyacetylene and just some manganese bronze brazing rod so that's brazed up now I'll leave that to cool down by itself and then just clean up the the uh, brazing on it see if that's going to be strong enough it's the brazed up quadrant back in place uh, you can see the the brazing on it there how I sort of angled it to get a good a good fill of braze in there and it seems to be working so that's good we'll just see how long that lasts I guess back on to looking at Riley stuff after fixing up the lathe I'm trying to figure out exactly where the radiator sits on the car and this is another one of those details where it's really hard to know exactly where it goes uh, obviously I've got lots of pictures and sort of blueprints things like that but it's a very difficult detail to really understand because from the photographs it's hard to get a good perspective of exactly where things go and from the blueprints you can't really see because looking at the detail from the side you you can't see where the mounts are so the way it works is there are these aluminium castings which bolt to the chassis rails there's sort of four mounting bolts and the headlamps fit on top of these and also these little brackets that uh, are riveted normally to the side of the radiator shell you can see where they used to be on here and then they sort of sit on there and uh, attach the radiator shell to the to the frame what I'm trying to figure out is exactly where along the chassis this this mounting needs to go and my best guess so far is basically in line with the springs, in line with the front axle. That seems to make sense. Um, I've measured it all up and with all the timing covers on the front and with the dynamo in place, that would bring the front of the dynamo basically in line with the front of the radiator shell. So I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm close. It's another one of those details where looking at pictures of different cars it doesn't seem necessarily consistent uh, there seem to be different mounting brackets and again it's hard to know what's original what's from the factory or what's been modified over the years uh, this radiator shell for example is modified so this isn't an original brooklyn shell um, it was on an original brooklyn's but that's because the car this is based on 8075 had a long history in New Zealand of racing and being crashed and then repaired and modified and changed around so this is a radiator shell that somebody's obviously cut down from a saloon car one and I do actually have over here a very nice original saloon car one uh, it's not in 100% perfect condition, there's been a few little patches and things but this one is, is far too nice to, to um, cut up oh. to turn into, into a Brooklyn's one and obviously original Brooklyn's ones aren't exactly available uh, the last one I heard of that somebody was looking to sell I think they wanted something like £8,000 for it so I'll probably do what most people do and is just make my own obviously I've got patterns to use um, this one Joss my mentor was always keen for me to reuse this one 
but it would need modifying to do that because it's not correct. And I always remember him telling me there was something wrong with this radiator. It was it was too high. I think it was about an inch too high, which affected the the bonnet line of the car. And one of my friends overseas has made one of these, so I know it can be done. Um, I need to find out where he got his measurements from. So I'm basing my measurements at the moment on pictures that he sent me and other drawings and, and other reference material I have. Um, one of the tricks I can do in Fusion 360 is import a, a photograph as, as a canvas, they call it, and then you can calibrate that and then use that to get measurements, um, which works reasonably well. But the problem is any sort of photograph is going to have a certain amount of distortion to it, um, perspective and distortion depending on what lens they used and that kind of thing. So it gives you a good rough estimate, but it's really hard to get very accurate measurements of them. Uh, but doing that, I can see, yes, this one is wrong. Um, the way I have it at the moment, the height is correct. Uh, as far as I can tell, looking at measurements of other cars and blueprints and things, uh, this is about 820 millimeters off the ground, which kind of gives you an idea of how low the car is. Um, although looking at it, it's not it's not that much lower than my MG really, but it is very low to the ground, and also your seating position is obviously very very low. So that's at kind of the right height. Um, possibly it needs to be a little bit higher. Just going by the fact that these bolts, if, if you had a bonnet on here, they're only just going to clear the bonnet. So there is a little bit of a, a downward angle on the bonnet, of course, it's not flat. Uh, but the, the main problem with this one is it's far too tall in that the bottom extends down too far. Uh, you can see I've just got it sitting on a piece of wood, which is giving me the correct height. But effectively, this horseshoe goes down too far. And um, you can see, I mean, that board is, I've probably got it sitting an inch above the axle. And you've got at least two inches of axle travel, if we can see it, under here, before the front axle would hit the, hit the frame. Um, so this is, this is basically too tall. Uh, it should have been cut off more along here somewhere so that you've got you know more more clearance between the the front axle and the bottom of the radiator than you have between the um, the springs and the the frame rails otherwise of course on 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 extreme suspension movement uh, you'd bash the bottom of your radiator tank so that's what I'm wondering with this one if originally it would have been mounted higher to avoid that um, which is why it sat higher at the top and why it affected the the line of the bonnet. Um, fortunately, Joss isn't around to ask anymore, but if I can get accurate measurements, dimensions, uh, it's basically only the height I need, really, because the widths are all the same. Uh, and then what I want to do is I don't really want to build an entire radiator. Uh, this is one of these details where I need to look into it and find out if, for a historic replica, uh, how historic does it need to be? Um, if I make a, a radiator surround and have the appropriate grill in front of it, is it acceptable for me to use a modern core behind there, sort of hidden inside there? because the way these radiators are built, the shell is part of the tank. Um, so this is all one piece. This one, by the way, weighs a ton. It's far heavier than that other original one I've got for some reason. Uh, so either way, I'm going to have to make this around, uh, which will be interesting. Uh, obviously, you have to make it in multiple pieces, and I've been trying to figure out, well, what pieces would you make this in? Um, you know, how do you cut and weld the metal to build something like this? 
I'm sure whichever way I do it is probably wrong um, because I don't have enough experience to know how many pieces you would make this from. But, you know, would it be two vertical sides uh, and the front? Although you could probably do the bottom from one piece sort of folded and then shaped and then you'd do the top in a couple of pieces. I don't really know. So it's another one of these things I'm just going to have to start bashing metal around and see what happens, I suppose. But, yeah, the, the, that measure, the critical measurement I need at the moment, really, is from this bracket to the front of the car. And then at least I can bolt those brackets on and I know exactly where the radiator is is going to sit. The last two days I've been out here in Big Shed. It's been very hot, it's over 30 degrees. Um, bashing bits of metal to see if I could make some sort of radiator surround. Uh, this is the one that came with the parts car. It's been massively hacked around. It's an old saloon car one that's been cut down. Um, it's completely battered around. Uh, if I use this I'd need to completely take it apart, fix it all up and then reuse it. Um, and it's still not an original one obviously. Uh, I've also discovered this one is wrong. It is an inch too long and there's actually a quarter inch difference from side to side. So it's slightly longer on one side than the other. I figured that out after I started making my own one. Uh, this is the other one I have that I could cut down, but I don't want to because it's in such nice condition. So I thought I might as well have a go at making one. Now, I have no idea how to actually do this. So I just sort of started and started bashing around bits of metal and came up with this. And I didn't bother filming any of this because... I, like I say, I didn't know what I was doing, so it's not a tutorial. Um, I've probably done it the complete wrong way. But I've ended up with something that works, and I've learned a lot trying to do it. Uh, I don't know that this one's going to be usable at all. Um, but it was a good experience, and it was a good exercise in trying to figure out how to do it. Uh, the way I made it in the end was in one, two, three, uh, five pieces. I started with the sides. And they were basically just flat pieces with a curved top and a little bit of shape in, the, in, in them so that they're not flat. And then I bashed out this top front piece here. Um, I ended up using the, the sandbag and mallet there um, and sort of basically bashed it out and then used the wheel to sort of smooth it off. That works really well. Uh, it's impressive how well that works, actually. And then I... Uh, I think this is one of the places I went wrong. I then welded that front piece to the side pieces uh, because I was having trouble trying to f match up all the different bits. And then I made the top piece to fit. And that was a little bit tricky because the, the fronts and the sides, I could kind of make as separate pieces and then lay them on top of the... The radiators I've got to check how close the fit was. Uh, it's a bit tricky on this one because it's so battered and I didn't want to use the other one too much because I didn't want to scratch it. And I started doing that for the top and then found I couldn't do that without cutting a hole for the filler so I could actually fit it up against the panel but then that having that hole there I think makes it harder to shape and that sort of sent me wrong a little bit. But I ended up getting something kind of sort of approximating it. And it, if I take this and put it on top of there, it does kind of fit, but I went wrong. Uh, the reason it's not fitting, so the shape is quite good, but it's sitting up way too high. And that's because this hole ended up in the wrong place and I think that was because I'd made the hole and made the panel and then I'd been fitting it on 
and where this panel and that panel overlaps, you, you end up cutting one and then welding the two together. So you effectively scribe along a line along the edge of one of them so you know where to cut, cut the other. And I cut the wrong one. So instead of uh, cutting this one, I ended up cutting this one and forgot that that meant my hole was now in the wrong place. And I think that's why it's basically sitting up wrong. Um, I was able to match the, the shape around the back by put this down. Uh, it's probably a bit heavy, but oh, this radiator really weighs a ton. Um, I mean, a ridiculous amount for for what it is. Uh, you can see how it's kind of had a modern, a more modern shell welded into it, and it's all one piece. But this flange is actually quite thick steel. It's, it's about 1.6 mil, I think, uh, and it's got a a little ledge on it. And it's been punched to have these little straps, uh, little slots, which is where the sort of bonnet lacing goes. So I'll have to see if I can replicate something like that. Um, for mine, because it's not going to be a tank effectively, I've just left enough on the edge that I can fold around a flange and then I could solder this piece onto it, silver solder it. Um, but this gave me a really good indication of what the the shape of the thing should be. So I was able to basically take that and sit it on top of there to get the the outer edge correct, which worked well. And uh, that one I was able to, to check on this one as well, because this is similar on the back. It's got that same strip around it. Um, so the other mistake I made, I think, was I MIG welded some of it. I've tried to use gas welding on it where I could, but in a few places I found MIG was just easier to be able to put a tack and then weld it up. And I didn't get some of the seams, uh, some of the joins good enough to be able to gas weld without filler. Um, I did down the bottom here, and this is another thing I'm, I'm having trouble with, is even with a gas weld with no filler, what I find is it sinks in a little bit. Um, so I'm still working on exactly how you sort of hammer that flat, planish that out from the back, because it's smooth on the back. It's not like there's high spots there I can, I can knock up. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure what you do there. And same with the, the MIG welding. Anywhere you MIG weld, you then have to grind the welds flat, and I'm not very good at that. And also with the MIG welds, you end up with these little low spots. And again, I'm not sure exactly the best way to bring those up so I can file them out. Um, I've been really careful with sanding it. I'm not using any sort of power sanders. I did knock the tops off the MIG welds with the angle grinder, but just the welds. And then I tried to smooth the rest out just using the file because I find as soon as I go near it with power tools, I end up gouging it, whereas with the file, it stays pretty flat. Um, the other mistake I made was I made one side a little bit too short and I had to weld a strip all the way along. So there's a messy weld there, but that won't matter because this line kind of shows where this will fold in. Um, yeah, you can see here where I've got sort of low spots. I mean, I can feel that one. So I kind of have to get in behind there and kind of knock those out as much as I can so I can file some off. And it's already got a little bit thin in some of the corners. Um, and the other problem, the other thing that's not quite right on it is the shape here isn't quite right. I haven't quite got enough slope here. It's a bit too high just here. And I don't really know if I can sort of shrink that down in any practical way at the moment. Um, I don't have the skills to do that. It looks a little bit worse because, as I say, this hole is a little bit too far back. It should be maybe half an inch further forward this way. But... It's, it's kind of there. Like I say, this is the first time I've ever tried doing this. This one's probably not going to be usable um, unless I was going to paint it, but Brooklyn's don't have painted 
right out of shells. They're, they're nickeled, basically. Um, so you need a, to be able to get that sort of finish, you have to have perfect metalwork. And I'm not sure I've got the skills to actually get perfect metalwork. So it's a good little experiment. Like I say, if I want a sort of temporary fake painted shell that's pretty much the right shape, then I could finish this off as best I can, give it some filler and paint it. Uh, the other thing that would need to happen is it needs the effectively a fake honeycomb to go in here um, to block this off. And this hole here is for the um, where the dynamo goes. So we sort of vaguely prop it up on the car. Uh, it's not going to stand up by itself. But. Uh, it kind of goes on there. So uh, it's an awful lot of work. Um, I'll keep bashing away at it and filing it. Um, because of my lack of skills, it's going to take a lot of filing. I wish I'd made it out of heavier material, but all I had was one millimeter. So God knows how thin it's going to end up when I'm when I'm done. Uh, but yeah, that's basically been two and a half days work, I think figuring it out as I go. But the good thing is today some parts arrived from James at the Riley Register Spares. I haven't actually opened this yet, so let's see what's inside it. I just cut the top open. Uh, this is the brake string, brake cable flexible steel cable so on the nine like this it's a single cable <laughs> that kind of whoops loops backwards and forwards around the car basically goes from the front wheel to if it'll focus uh, to the center compensator adjuster mechanism there down to the back around a pulley back through that and back to the front wheel so it's quite convoluted what else did I get? Uh, these should be brass hubcaps uh, to go in the wheel centers. Okay, that's everything. So these should be all of the bits I need to rebuild the brake springs. Oops, the gimbal thing's not happy. Uh, these should be the brake shoe return springs. These are also for the brakes. Um, I think one of these is for the handbrake. Uh, I'm not sure what that one is. That looks like a um, rocker gear spring, but there should be four of those, unless I ordered the wrong thing. Ah, yes, for some silly, silly reason I only ordered one of those, um, unless there was only one left. But I do have to order some more parts soon, so I'm not sure what that is. Might be the rubber bushes for the brakes. Uh, but anyway, there's lots of good parts there. So hopefully that'll get me going again.